right. You all seeing a uh, PowerPoint slideshow? Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Learning objective four. So we are already on page 196 here. <clears throat> And this is introducing uh, to you basically uh, break-even points, break-even analysis. And break-even point is basically when your total revenue and your total costs equal, leaving no profit. Okay, you saw that briefly in Learning Objective 3 uh, for Varga Video Company there. And you're going to see more of it here in Objective 4. Woo-hoo-hoo! Um, the wonderful thing is it can be computed or derived in a number of ways. You can do it from a mathematical formula, you can do it from uh, a contribution margin, or you can use a graph. I don't want to be too graphic, but we're going to be getting a little graphic here when I show you the graph. Um, and uh, so we, we'll, we'll take a look at it, see, see how you do. This is actually not that bad. Um, particularly if you remembered your algebra. <laughs> okay, so in terms of a mathematical equation, um, you know, we have to figure out how net income can be zero. Okay. And in order for net income to be zero, uh, you have to have your sales minus your variable costs minus your fixed costs equal zero net income. So basically speaking, we're starting with this equation, 500 times what quantity? We're really kind of figuring out what quantity, right, the number of units we need to sell just to break even, okay? So $500 times Q uh, minus $300 times Q minus $200,000 will give us zero net income. So in order to, um, we're gonna get the Qs on one side because they're all cute. <clears throat> so we're gonna put those on one side. Uh, and that means we're gonna add 200,000 to both sides. So that's gonna leave us with 500 Q minus 300 Q equals 200,000 plus zero, which is 200,000. Now we can actually do the math on this side. The Q doesn't change, but the numbers will. 500 minus 300 is 200 Q. So 200 Q equals 200,000. So to get Q all by its lonesome on this side, we're dividing both sides by $200. Um, as you see, that gives us, the quantity is gonna be $200,000 divided by $200, of course the dollar signs and everything else balance out, where 1,000 units will bring us to a break-even point, 1,000 units. If we sell 1,000 of these, whatever we're selling, we will break even, okay? And that's basically how to get the break-even point in terms of units using this mathematical equation. This, by the way, is shown on page 196. However, it's not the only way. Uh, you can also use uh, the contribution margin uh, technique, okay? As we know, the contribution margin is simply the total revenue minus the variable costs, okay? And so we can, uh, we can compute break-even point uh, where the contribution margin and the total fixed costs are simply even. That'll get us to zero. So in this case, we have, um, uh, when the break-even point uh, in units uh, is desired here, we're gonna be using the total fixed costs, which is from the same company we've been using for the last couple of objectives here, 200,000. And we divide that by the contribution margin per unit, okay, which is $200. Um, that means that we have to sell 1,000 units to break even, okay. 
So this is just another way to do break-even analysis, but instead of doing a mathematical formula, you can do uh, you can use the contribution margin um, in order to calculate that as well. Fascinating, Arujo, show me more. Okay, well you can actually look at how many. What's your sales? What does your what do your sales have to be to break even? <clears throat> because in contribution margin ratio, you're using uh, the information that basically is part of your CVP income statement. So uh, you can calculate it in units. That's true. You can also calculate it in dollars. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Okay. Um, and that means you take your fixed costs, which are still $200,000 for this company. And we divide it by the contribution margin ratio, which is 40%. And that will mean that we have to sell $500,000 uh, of these units to break even. Okay. And again, all these numbers come from the Vargo video that we've been looking at since objective three, and it continues. Okay. So that's where these numbers come from. Okay. All right. Um, actually, this is a pretty interesting little insight. Um, uh, charter flights actually can offer a very, very good deal. Um, of course, I'm not sure that this was done a little while ago. Um, but uh, now, of course, it's, it's hard to, you know, get on any particular plane without wondering uh, whether it's a good idea or not. Um, so basically speaking, you should understand that um, individual char chartered aircraft are, are very popular, are very, very popular. You don't have to fly a big commercial aircraft. Uh, business people often will look at these private jets um, to get them from point A to point B. Well, for those private jets, okay, um, they only have to sell a little over three seats to break even. And they have at least eight seats. <laughs> least okay some have more some have a little bit less but they only have to sell three seats basically 3.3 seats to break even which means that fourth customer the fifth customer the sixth customer the seventh customer uh etc um particularly when all eight seats are full that company is uh is laughing all the way to the bank they got an 80 percent profit margin going on um in this case so Again, the average charter jet has eight seats. Again, some has a little bit less, some have a little bit more, um, but they are small. And uh, those are empty seats that are better off sold to somebody. Um, and in this case, you can see why you know, they would put that. So there's actually this company called FlightServe. There's actually a few of them out there I've seen. Um, I can't think of one that I've recently looked at. But basically, they, they see what um, seats are available on these charter flights that are going from here to there. And you can basically buy tickets from them. Uh, and they book you on the flights. Um, it's great. I mean, it's, it's a really great idea. Why waste the space? Why waste the fuel? It's more efficient when the planes are, are more full. And it's a lot more profitable, clearly. All right. Sorry, I have to get graphic. Um, in this case, it's a, a graphic look at what, uh, what everything is going on. So what we have here is a number of lines. I know you might not like graphs. Uh, I personally think graphs are, are okay. I mean, I don't have a ton of them like hanging up in my, in my house, but, uh, but they're okay. Um, what we have here is, uh, again, we're still looking at, if I'm not mistaken, we're still looking at the same company. So here we have $200,000 of fixed costs for this company. That's what this line is showing here. <clears throat> okay. Um, and our break even point, right, is if we sell 1,000 units, we will earn $500,000. And that means that the amount of revenue and the amount of expenses that we have for that period of time are equal to zero, okay? 
as soon as we sell one more unit and above, we start seeing the sales increase at a much higher rate than our costs. And these costs are uh, variable costs and fixed costs combined. And so as you see, as the volume increases quite a bit, more and more sales lead to bigger and bigger profit margins for, for these particular companies, okay? <clears throat> and so that's, that's basically, you know, what this graphic piece is, is sort of about. Notice that a lot of companies lose money, right, in this area here where their, their sales, that's the sales line I was, I was doing, when their sales are below either their fixed costs uh, and their variable costs combined, okay? Uh, they have to make it to at least break even or more to be viable, to be viable. Anything prior, anything lower than this means uh, owners are going to have to pony up more money to keep the thing going, uh, hoping that they're going to pass break even. Some companies can do that for a little while uh, and get lucky. Uh, Tesla is one of them. Um, other companies have real problems surviving in, in this. If they, if they cannot uh, make a profit, they, they can't continue. So this is just the graph. I hate it to be graphic, but it is what it is. All right, I got a question for you. Gosson Company is planning to sell 200,000 pliers for four bucks each. Contribution margin ratio is 25%. 25%. If, uh, if Grassen will break even at this level of sales, what are the fixed costs? Woo, Ooh, this is loaded, this is loaded. Well, what do we need to know to fix this, to solve this one? What do you think? Um, answer is C. Your answer is C. How did, oh yeah, okay, how did you get there? How did you get there? That's correct, but how did you get there? Um, for, for, oh, and I, hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa. Um, I'm sorry, that's, uh, I'm gonna erase this for a second. I'm not sure that's correct. I said four times 45 person. Okay. Well, the $4, um, the $4 per unit has, um, the contribution margin is, is a dollar, right? For each of these. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you have $4 pliers and $1 of that, if each of those pliers is going to be your contribution margin. Mm -hmm. right? Um, what are your fixed costs going to need to be? Well, your contribution margin has to cover your fixed costs. So $4 times the 25% is a dollar. Yes. Times the 200,000 flyers is $200,000 as you said. So just want to make sure you're doing great. Thank you. Okay, very good. All right, let's do this all together. Uh, page 199, you'll see the do it exercise 4-4 on break even analysis here. You have Lombardi company. They have a, a selling price of $400 per unit. They have a variable cost per unit of 240. They have fixed costs of 180. <clears throat> and they want you to compute the break even point. If we first A, use the mathematical formula, or B, use the contribution margin per unit. And so, what we'll do first 
is get um, the equation down. So in order to get a break-even point, our net income has to be zero. We have $400 selling price times some quantity minus the $240 variable cost per unit times some quantity. And we need to subtract out all of the fixed costs to get zero, okay? So again, we're gonna, we can add our, fi our fixed cost over here, uh, multiply by, I'm gonna add by both sides here. Uh, and then we can actually solve for Q in this case. And it's going to be uh, 1,125 units. Okay, this should be equal. You can't have an equation without an equal sign, right? Um, somewhere. So when you divide by 160 on both sides, this is the units. All right, B is the contribution margin, right? Well, the contribution margin is the difference between the selling price and the variable cost per unit measured in, in a percentage. So $400 minus the $240 would give you $160 in um, contribution margin. $160 contribution margin divided into the $40, $400 would give you the percentage, right? But in terms of per unit, we're looking at fixed costs of 180 uh, divided by $160 in um, contribution, contribution margin per unit. And that means that we would have to sell 1,125 units to break even. To break even, okay. All right, so we're gonna bring us back to the main Zoom meeting again and see if there's any questions.